Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and uh, do you guys know that Microsoft apparently destroyed the task manager? <laughs> you know, I wish I could honestly make this kind of stuff up, ladies and gentlemen, but you know, I've been on this kind of like, uh, you know, for, you don't have to be using Microsoft Windows, okay? There are other options that exist. But, uh, you know, the last uh, month has pretty much kind of been a disaster for Microsoft in terms of, like, Windows 11. So first off, Windows 10 is already EOL. You know, it's already out of the play. You know, unless you switch to, like, IoT or you live in, like, Europe. For a lot of you guys, getting updates, well, that's just not a thing. It, you know, a few days after that, Microsoft bloated the ever-loving shit out of Windows 11 by adding constant Microsoft AI Copilot features. And now there's a pretty serious question that I think people are asking. Is, is Windows just written by AI this, these days? <laughs> so for anybody that doesn't realize this, ladies and gentlemen, a, a few days ago, there was an update that dropped on Windows 11. And, and the reason I'm making a video about it was because apparently it's a bug that causes the task manager to just duplicate. We have reached a point where closing an application is not a simple task anymore. So for instance, right over here, I actually have the task manager completely open on my system. Now, in order for this crazy bug to work, ladies and gentlemen, you need to actually go and install an optional update. So I want to kind of uh, negate a little bit of the clickbait. If you're not somebody that basically slaps on the ability for your computer to be updated to the nth degree, then I think you're safe. And, and look, here's a general little piece of tech advice from, from me. Okay, I never update anything to like the beta stuff, okay? I'm not getting paid by these companies to try out beta shit. So I'm not gonna be a fucking beta, so to speak. Now, generally, I don't really update my computer to like any crazy like special branch. I don't update my phone to beta branches, you know, cause I, I need to be able to use the thing in order to, you know, make calls and stuff. You know, I, I've noticed cars are getting beta updates. God forbid you consider updating your motor vehicle to something that's not completely tested. Now inside Windows, there's something known as the Insider Program, which is irrelevant to this video because we are not even in the Insider Program at all, okay? So I'm not in there. What I have done is I decided to go to the optional updates, right? So for instance, inside the update history, you can see that I downloaded a preview update. So in order to kind of be nice to Microsoft, you really shouldn't be getting this bug if you're not willing to install things that aren't entirely tested. But to show you how goofy this is, we have the task manager open, okay? Now this is my most probably used Windows application. Like I think we all fuck around with the task manager, you know? You wanna kill a video game that's running erratically, you wanna end a program pretty sufficiently, you go to the Windows task manager. Now you would think clicking the escape button closes the only aspect of the Windows task manager. No, not anymore it seems. So if you actually open up the task manager again, <laughs> and you actually type in the words task manager, the story becomes a little goofier. Now here I'm sitting at 15 processes. So the way this bug works is if I close task manager one more time, that number should in theory go up to 16. And of course it has in fact jumped up a little bit to 19, but it also includes a bunch of other things. So let me, yeah, 16 right over here. So you can see that in every single one of these cases. You can see that in the background, there's a bit of processing going on on the CPU. There's also a little bit of memory used every single time this task manager is there. Now, if you're the kind of person that doesn't have a you know crazy big computer, this can actually add up. And if you're somebody that turns this on and off thinking that, oh man, <laughs> you know, I just wanted to kill a program. No, you still left a lingering nugget of poo connected to your computer's rectum the entire time. Now, when I saw this bug in Windows, I, immediately I, I just sort of laughed and said, <laughs> you know, I never really have to worry about this because mostly all I do use nowadays is Linux or Mac OS, mostly for video production work. But Linux is where I primarily sit at. So for me, anytime I see these Windows bugs where it just spikes up to 20% CPU usage, yeah, to me, this is not something that is that is known to me. Now, I don't wanna to shit too hard on Microsoft. Remember, bugs happen all the time, okay? You know, it's not a Windows thing. It's not even, sometimes you'll find a goofy bug on Mac. Sometimes you'll find goofy shit on, sometimes Linux won't even boot up right because maybe there's an update on your really bleeding edge distribution that ruined. It doesn't happen that often, but again, you know, you should never feel too comfy uh, on your own laurels, so to speak, right? So of course, Microsoft acknowledges this behavior. They say that it's mitigated and mitigated in the sense means you gotta go through this task list to kill task manager. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, one thing I didn't expect to be doing on my career, I'm gonna kill task manager on camera the right way.
So according to good old Microsoft, the way in order to kill these poor little task managers that don't know what to do is to open up your start button, go to command prompt, and apparently you should run this as your administrator. Hit that good old yes button. And of course, inside here, you want to do task kill.exe. Yes, the program to specifically murder the task. So usually I just do sick kill boys on the old penguin, but uh, it ain't that simple these days. Slash I am task manager.exe. And of course, slash F. Now, as soon as you hit enter, what you'll see on the right over here is a mass uh, murder of what appears to be these poor little task managers, okay? So enter. Oh, look at that, it terminated, woo! It actually wipes all of them off the map. Now, if you open up the task manager again, ladies and gentlemen, go to task manager, you can see that there finally isn't any background processes. So yeah, it is mitigated in the sense that you, the user, have to really mitigate things yourself, right? Now, obviously, I'm sure that the, you know, developers at Microsoft are probably fixing this dog shit up, but this is just one of many problems that's going on with Microsoft at the moment, ladies and gentlemen. So of course, obviously, if you look at the massive issues that actually go around over here, one of the things they bring up is IIS websites might fail to load. So some of these issues revolved around you not being able to resolve localhost, which actually wasn't that big of a deal because Microsoft really apparently fixed that up by updating Defender really fast. And then of course, arguably the biggest issue was USB mouse and keyboard <laughs> not working in the recovery environment. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, you know when your Windows completely breaks the fuck up and you're like, damn, son, I need to recover some stuff. So you open up this menu, right, where you can access a bunch of options. Now, I have all of my mice and keyboard connected via USB. We're long past the PS slash two days, boys. Ain't no serial ports on this guy's motherboard. Yeah, if all of a sudden your keyboard and mouse stops working, yeah, man, make, makes recovery a bitch, doesn't it? But yeah, that was also a really big problem, right? And obviously Microsoft is kind of forced to fix these issues up. Now you might be wondering, okay, why, why is it so bad? Why is it, why are these updates kind of happening? Now there's been some funny memes on the Microsoft subreddit, you know, Windows 11 subreddit. One that I picked out specifically over here was the future of Windows. Windows 12 one day will look like this. Completely empty, only one option, not even a start menu, just the co-pilot. <laughs> You have to talk to your computer to get it to anything. Hey, Microsoft, my wife's about to go into labor. Can you find the nearest hospitals? Copilot fails on you. Oh, this one. Computer, boot up, launch Firefox, open 600 porn tabs. I'm sorry, Dave, porn up is not allowed in your state. <laughs> Might I recommend a VPN or better yet, Tor? Yeah, as if Microsoft would even fucking somewhat hint towards the dark web. Imagine if you're like, Copilot, open up, delete yourself. <laughs> Windows stops working. God damn. Now, obviously, look, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's just funny to see it. And this comes at the cusp of one of the biggest sort of like articles that I saw this year, which is apparently the CEO of Microsoft says that as much as 30% of the code at Microsoft is actually just written by artificial intelligence. So he, he and again, this quote is interesting. It says, I'd say maybe 20 30% of the code that's inside their repos and some of our projects are probably all written by software. Now, I honestly don't know what he really means by this, if Copilot was used to properly just generate code, or sometimes, you know, they get really cheeky and say, oh, well, we use like a little bit of autocorrect. Isn't that technically AI generated code? The point is AI generated coding, which is also known as vibe coding. It's a pretty big thing. Uh, people have been talking about this probably for over a year now, especially when AI models can actually start writing code. I saw this video from PewDiePie the other day, which like, well, yesterday, really that blew me away where, you know, he built a massive beast in his fucking like home. Like it was like a 10 GPU project. He got like the 4090Ds, like really, really solid local powerhouse. And he was using it to run local models. We live in a day and age where learning how to code, learning how to program, anybody can do it as long as you really want to set your mind to it. And one of the ways that people are kind of doing it now is with AI coding. So for instance, this is a local piece of code that I just generated as I was yapping. So what I did was I locked in to uh, a local AI model that I had, something known as Quen3 Coder at 30 billion parameters, which runs on my actual GPU. So I asked the program, I want to make a Linux application that serves as a task manager similar to Windows Ma Manager. 
And as I was yapping, it was actually writing all of this code. This code that once placed inside this code editor over here, we were able to actually compile and get a, a task manager. So literally it's gotten so easy that something that would have probably taken you, you know, I don't know, like a fair bit of time, you can easily code together inside these tools. So for instance, if I open up a terminal and just run this application, just drop it in here, hit the enter key, you can see that there's actually a task manager running on my system. So I can actually refresh tasks. I can display my system information, which is, does show how many CPUs I have, which obviously you can actually start to see some of the issues over here. I don't have 128 CPUs. So obviously I don't also sit on just zero megabytes of memory. But that's what it takes, right? AI code, and it's a great example because AI doesn't necessarily write perfect code. It can write pretty decent code. It does require you to also look through the code yourself and see where things are wrong, why it unfortunately isn't able to parse the memory and why it's getting CPUs wrong. And again, you can always just feed code to other artificial intelligences and have them fire up so they can start fixing up with other code which is obviously something I've seen happen out there. But again, this is not a vibe coding tutorial. The point of this video is to show you that things aren't exactly all that super duper kosher on the side of Microsoft Windows, right? And obviously, look, I think it's safe to say it's an easy own on Microsoft, but I, I kind of tend to see this happening pretty much everywhere in most of like corporate America. Like the other day I saw that Amazon wanted to like replace workers entirely with robots, which is obviously a much more physical thing here. And again, they're already cutting jobs in the corporate side. So again, it's, it's, we're sitting in a world where because of all these tools, we're getting rid of that sort of human component. And I think we're already starting to see the signs of what happens to the software we use every single day when it seems like the humans get taken out and the fucking coder AI agents get thrown in. Because ultimately you can have AI write you like thousands of lines of code, but the thing is it's prone to making plenty of errors. And ultimately I wonder how much it matters at the end of the day, like how many hours you save, when you also have to spend an amount, hours as well, uh, fixing up the mistakes of the AI, right? Now, obviously, things have kind of grown a lot, too, when it comes to just the replacements, right? Now, obviously, for a lot of people, it's going to be a situation where, listen, man, I mean, I have to use Windows. What other alternatives do I have? Now, look, as somebody that's been using Cache OS, I want to say for quite a fair bit now, I want to say this is probably, as far as gaming goes, one of the snappiest, fastest versions of Linux that I could actually ever switch to. And it's crazy to think about just gaming in general, like 90% I heard of Windows games are now running underneath Linux. And it number could be a lot higher, obviously, but you know, clearly because of things like anti-cheat and obviously exclusive games to Windows, games that typically rely on uh, the UWP system are not going to work. But even there, there's been situations where Minecraft Bedrock is now apparently running underneath Linux to some extent, which again shows you that competition is kind of there. A lot of the browsers, tools that you use, you know, like Discord and whatnot are pretty much feature identical between platforms. So really that excuse is almost thrown out the window. Now for people using creative applications, yes, that is an issue, but obviously even in some cases you can run things like Photoshop through virtualization and make it look as if it's seamless underneath Linux. But even then, I think the adoption as it grows, it's probably gonna give less of a reason for companies like Adobe to not at least embrace putting together a team to develop things for the Linux client. But again, all that requires is adoption. One of the things that kind of blew me away though was like the amount of people who are jumping to other Linux distributions simply because it's just there as the alternative for people that are losing Windows 10 support. One of them I saw was this thing called Zorin OS, which I'm not somebody that wants to promote Zorin OS simply because, again, I don't really necessarily use it, but you go to their website and they, they probably couldn't make it look easier if anybody tried. It's a simple matter of going to their site, downloading something, and they, of course they've got professional versions too, which I don't necessarily agree with because all of this shit is usually them bundling in software that you could download for free within seconds. But they've done it in a way where again, they wanna make it super easy for people to switch to. And of course, ultimately one thing that they've provided too is like different versions of the desktop user interface to match things like Mac or Windows. And of course, look, ultimately at the end of the day too, it's $77 versus you know Microsoft's license. But anyways, if you still wanted to get this for free, you can download the core version.
So which they actually do have completely available. And I did in fact run this on my system. In fact, to show you how smooth some of this stuff really is, this is Zorin OS again running underneath my system. Now, of course, I don't have like all of the extensions available, but it's a pretty damn decent looking clean system. Again, it looks very similar to Windows 10 as it is. You know, it's got the exact same sort of like scheme when it comes to date and time. The bottom, again, it literally, if you sat somebody next to you and like, and told them to play around with this, they might not immediately see the difference, right? Again, things like the file manager, the stores, these are all just available. And again, it's designed for people that just want to have a computer that works for them, right? It comes with everything bundled out of the box, Brave, everything available. And really, at the end of the day, it's just Ubuntu Linux right here. And of course, one of the things that's important over here is obviously things like Windows application support. So when you go over here, they have their own special ability to run applications that are Windows applications in their operating system through tools like Wine and Bottles. So again, if you follow through their instructions, you can get some of your favorite applications working underneath the Penguin. Again, to upgrade the system, it's also never been easy. Again, these are systems that you can use without ever opening up those terminal shells, you know, making something look confusing. Everything here is done in a graphical user interface. And again, this isn't the only Linux distribution that you need. You can get something like Ubuntu and get a relatively decent experience. Linux Mint is great. But if you wanna play around with things like Cache OS, that works just as good. So yeah, ultimately, Microsoft is a machine that is absolutely <laughs> getting gummed the hell up, whatever it is with artificial intelligence. And it's easy to make jokes about it too. But ultimately, I don't wanna make this video as just like an entire sandbag to Microsoft. I get it, you know, making an operating system, it's one of the toughest things to do. But ultimately, with something as important as Windows and the position that they're in, I feel like they probably should get their shit together. Because ultimately, ladies and gentlemen, the year of the Linux desktop is not that far away. If Microsoft keeps making mistakes, people will discover that there are alternatives. It really just takes a small movement that snowballs into something much bigger. But hey, alternatives do exist. But yeah, I thought it was a funny bug. Wanted to share it with you. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike if you dislike it. I am out.